it's Jenna with another installment of Stay Inspired. And today I wanted you guys to officially meet Tim from Tim & Co Motion Pictures. Mm -hmm. She's always the girl behind the camera and I can never convince her to get in front of the camera. Just today. Just, Just today. today. She's the bomb. I always hashtag her as the little videographer in, <laughs> on Instagram. Yeah. She's awesome. Tim okay. & Co Motion Pictures. So now it's time for me to go behind the camera. Go Jenna. Yay! Okay. So. So today, I'm gonna do the headshot video. So I'm gonna go over headshots, and my sweet hubby is gonna be my subject today. He's so sweet, thank you for doing it. Yeah. We're gonna go over um, a few things that I make sure of before I do headshots. The first thing I do is that I try to help my subjects pick out clothes, and I really wanna pick something that's pretty neutral and it doesn't have like patterns like I'm wearing or studs, you know, like I'm wearing. And then I picked out a few more things just to give you an example. They're just, um, <laughs> they're neutral and pretty plain. And, and this, it might even be too much. And if so, then I would just turn it inside out, you know, because really like the focus of the headshot is going to be from here up and it's all in the eyes and you really want to make sure something's going on in the eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe we can get Dave to give us a tip later about how to have that emotion going on. So. Uh, one of the first things I like to do about the lighting situation is you want to find a place that has super even lighting. So you don't want any shadows or any like backlight or any, like, anything like that when you're doing professional headshots because it really is just about the person's face. So I really love, love to use garages. So as you can see right here. So this garage is really perfect because I mean it's what? It's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon which is not perfect light but it's perfect in here because like we were talking about it's completely even light. The second thing that makes this amazing is that we have a natural reflector across the street. So right across the street, I have a white building that's reflecting light over here, plus I have concrete that's reflecting light up. That being said, I want my subject to sit down, Dave, my subject, my husband. I want you to sit down. The reason I want him to sit down is because I want his face to be as close to my natural re reflector as possible. So now when he lowers his body, He's going to be closer to the concrete that's bouncing up and making this awesome light in his eyes. So you can get that in a studio or you can get it here. Also when choosing um, the location, keep in mind of what the background is. So you'll see in a lot of my photos that are like our, um, my romantic wedding photos, I have you know the sun or greenery or flowers or something like beautiful and romantic in the background, but this, you just want it to be neutral. You don't want graffiti or, or flowers or anything in the background because again, it's all about the subject and it's all about what's going on in their eyes. So you don't want anything that's going to distract from them. Um, personally, my favorite lens to use when I'm taking headshots is an 85 millimeter 1.8. So that's very different than the 1.2 that I use when I'm shooting weddings. The 1.8 is actually a sports lens. It's really fast. And it's very important when you're shooting headshots to catch that emotion. And, um, and for me, I love to do it with the, again, Canon 85 1.8. My settings right now um, are gonna be ISO 200. I'm gonna have my aperture at 2.8. And it looks like my shutter is gonna, let's see, I'll tell you what my shutter is gonna be as soon as I look through the camera. So here I am focusing on Dave's eye and it looks like my shutter speed is at 250. Nice. The other thing I wanted to, to, to cover before we go uh, further is it matters about the angle. If you notice that I got down on Dave's angle because I want to be straight on with him. If I shoot above Dave, he's going to be looking up to me and that kind of gives an appearance of like a feminine or damsel in distress or something because like if you watch movies you'll see the angle of a girl like they might shoot down at her to make her look girly and if I shoot up to him he's going to look like Superman you know it's like very too much I want it to be straightforward so the angle is straightforward I'm going to be on his level breathe in yeah good so the last thing to cover is how to make your subject feel comfortable okay and Dave is a professional, like Dave Mahabi is a professional actor, he's been on tons of stuff. Dexter, Secret Circle, Vegas, movies, all kinds of cool stuff. So, so he knows how to be in front of the camera, so I don't really have to direct him too much. Um, but with other people, if it's maybe their first time getting headshots or something like that, you do have to have a connection there, right? And if you find someone's not really doing much, then 
I usually kind of tell them to like think about something or look away and look back and give me a smile. But um, but Dave is a natural and like I said, maybe he'll tell us a few things of, of to help you guys um, take better pictures. Just not put pressure on yourself. Don't feel pressure. Just try to enjoy the day. You know, it's a beautiful day. The light is amazing. Hopefully, your photographer is uh, friendly, <laughs> and nice, and don't smile. Let your kind of your heart. Uh, radiate through your eyes. Ooh, I like that. He said, let your heart radiate through your eyes. I like that. It's nice. Be playful if you want sometimes. Do you, fl you can flirt. You can flirt. You can flirt. Fine. I think he was just flirting with me just now. <laughs> and you just want to have a good time and enjoy it and let that energy come through. Uh, just to give you a recap about what to do when you're doing headshots is number one, you're going to help your subject pick out, pick out clothing that isn't too busy with patterns and crazy logos that's going to take away from them. Number two, you want to find a location that's got even light. Garages are awesome. Number three, do your best to find a location that has a natural reflector, right? So across the street from that garage, there's going to be you know a building that's like white or light or awesome that's going to have light come in. Also, when you find that location, make sure that the background isn't busy. It's not like graffiti or flower or greenery. It just needs to be very minimal so that the subject's face is what's, you know, is most important in the picture. Um, next, we're going to talk about the settings as a summary. Um, I, I love to use the Canon 85 1.8. That's my favorite lens. Just now, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. I had my, AS, my ISO at 200, my aperture at 2.8, and my shutter speed was at 250. So that may range for you. I always like to go a little bit lighter. Um, the next thing that we talked about was the angles. So you wanna be on the same level as your subject. You don't want the person looking up to you or looking down at you. You want it to be straightforward. And lastly, and probably the most important thing, was that connection that you're making with your subject. Headshots are all about, in the words of Dave Baez, um, he said, let your heart shine through your eyes. And that's what your job is there to do as the photographer. So for me, you know, it's like, I have to let anything go that's with my day, and I have to really be like, trying to find the connection with that person, and, and just encourage them, like, you look so great, you look so beautiful, it looks awesome when you do this, or, or you know, that kind of thing. It's just about that connection, you want this person to be able to be themselves in front of you, um, and just having a really good time. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks Dave. Thanks Tim. You guys are awesome. And thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.